Organized, student planned, student led, and I don't know why I'm here just to say hello. Uh, we're delighted to have visitors from Lund University in Sweden, and we're pleased that you come at such an exciting period of uh, our history, uh, a momentous time <coughs> when the equities are very high in, a lo in our national election. Uh, and I think that tonight we'll see a higher level of discourse than the country is used to uh, during this election period. Uh, because I have real confidence in the thought processes and in the, uh, the collegiality of our students. I'm particularly grateful to the efforts of several people who have contributed to tonight's event. Uh, from the undergraduate uh, diplomacy student association, Kyle Chapman and Luke Sikorsky, are you here? Yeah. And, uh, from the Journal of Diplomacy, Ricardo Rodriguez, Christine Petri, Sophia Vachetto, Karen Garrett, and Jay Chitterin. Are you all here? If you'd just be recognized. <laughs> We're also delighted to have Dr. Patrick Fisher as part of our panel tonight and from the Department of Political Sciences. Science. Uh, we're also glad that today we had the support of Heather Martina from Global Current to do interviews with uh, our visitors, and also from the Setonian. Uh, Brendan, are you here tonight? Uh, thank you for, for interviewing. So, uh, with that said, I will just turn this over to uh, Rich and Jay, and thank you for coming. I, I think this evening will be enjoyable and successful. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Dean Benzies. Um, my name is uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. Everyone calls me Rich. And I'm the editor-in-chief of the Whitehead Journal of Diplomacy. And this is Jay Chitteran, and he's the deputy editor-in-chief. Um, again, we'd like to extend um, our welcome to the, our visitors from Lund University. We're glad they're here. And we're also excited to see that they're excited about um, our country's political system. Um, this evening's discussion will last about an hour. And um, each speaker uh, represents a party. And um, excuse me, Professor Fisher is also here. So I'm going to ask a question, and uh, each speaker will have about two minutes to respond. And um, let's get this started. All right. The first one. So the first question, um, and we'll start or closest and we'll go towards the end, is please discuss four main principles upon which your party predicates itself. How does your platform represent what's best for the United States in 2008? Go ahead. Well, the Libertarian Party is founded really upon one simple principle, and that principle is freedom. Freedom with how you spend your money. Freedom with what you do in the bedroom. Freedom with what you do, you know, what you choose to put into your body. Freedom in all spheres of life. And so long as you choose, so as you, and you're using your freedom to not interfere with the rights of any other individual to use their freedom to the fullest extent possible. And like I said, this is very simple. It's very obvious, I should think. But sadly, it doesn't appear to be so in America today. But this platform is the best for America. It maximizes liberty, maximizes economic opportunity. It gives, lets people live their own lives in accordance you know, with the tradition you know, and beliefs of the founders, such that you know, not using force and fraud against any other individual, and allows for the greatest possible fulfillment in every individual's life. Well, the Republican Party was founded on a small government not intervening in your life unless there was a need to. But unfortunately, recently, we've gotten away from that, which is why I think in this election, we're trying to get back to that with Senator McCain. Um, and also, one of our biggest focuses is a strong national security policy. And I think that's important because we're in a time of uncertainty in this world. I'm, uh, lots of terrorist organizations and other things that we need to be focused on making sure that our borders are secure, that our country is safe, and that our people aren't being overtaxed so that our economic system can thrive again. All right, I think I'm just going to inject as I see necessary, but I, I think I'll have people go first, I think, otherwise. Okay, there you go. I, I would like to start by putting my perspective. I think it's very, very important with health care. And I am very sure that you think that as well. It's the foundation of who we are. If we are not healthy, what can we do? Can we work? Can, can we visit our friends? No, we cannot. And it's very important that the state guarantees uh, health insurance for all citizens 
within its border. That is very, very important. And I also believe that you get freedom. I believe in freedom very much, but I believe that you get freedom through security, through feeling that society is behind you, that you are not alone. You don't have to fight for survival every day. Then you are free to make the choices through your life. It's very important to respect the weak of society and take that into calculation. What I would like to say here, as maybe you others won't, I believe the environment and those issues should be our top priority. This is the only world we have and we should take that. And uh, according to American policies, I would like to point out that I will like to see America sign an environmental treaty in Copenhagen 2009. I think it's one of the most important questions of our time. Well, um, Democrats have had a uh, long history of uh, changing issues, I would say, um, which is a good, good thing because it clearly shows that the party is willing to, to hear all sides and is very flexible in its views. Um, the party is uh, generally known for a larger government, although I would have to say that over the past eight years we've seen a Republican administration that's grown the government more than possibly any government has in the history of the United States. Um, with that said, I think some of the uh, four of the strongest um, things we have regarding principles is uh, going towards what you just mentioned, is, which universal health care, uh, health care for everyone. Uh, Senator Obama understands that we can't go uh, straight into a government-run health care program and you know, he has said several times, you know, preferably if we were just starting healthcare right now, let's do a single payer healthcare. But we're not. We've already got a system that's set up, so we need to move and uh, move it in steps. So healthcare is one of the main principles which the party is focusing on right now. Also a strong stance on diplomacy. We want to move back towards uh, diplomatic relations with everyone, speaking with friends and enemies because you know, of course we speak with our friends, but if you're not speaking with your enemies, uh, you know, nothing's going to get done with regards to negotiations, and we're just going to remain a unilateral, uh, unilateral state of, uh, you know, fighting our enemies, not having allies. Uh, we've seen a strong decrease in, in how many allies we've had in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and these are things that I believe the Democratic Party can and bring back our positive view uh, around the world. Also, fiscal responsibility. Uh, we'd like to return to pay as you go. Uh, and, of course, a strong middle class, which we've seen a large decrease in uh, through tax cuts. Uh, we will see an increase in taxes for those making 250000 under Barack Obama. Uh, sorry, over 250,000 under Senator Obama if he becomes president. However, he does believe that we need a strong middle class, and we won't get to that unless we fix the housing market crisis. Uh, that's, sorry to cut you off. That's okay. time. We'll get to a lot of those uh, topics in a little bit. And last but not least, uh, thank you. Uh, there is something very wrong in America today, and the problem is that the majority of the people in this country don't control anything. They're pushed around by bosses of corporations that make millions of dollars and then when they fail, the bosses get bailed out and the workers are left on the streets. They have no voice in a political system that's left them behind and told them what's best for them while really uh, only uh, predicating the uh, worst part of uh, businesses. What we really need to do is get back to a government that has the people's best interest in mind. And through that, I think a move towards democratic socialism is the best opportunity for this. We, we believe that the people should be the ones that the government looks out for, and the government should represent the people's needs, not the needs of big businesses and rich people who control 1% of the population controlling more than, and more than 10, but I believe it's 19% of the wealth right now in this country is ridiculous and disgusting. And if we're going to maintain our strength as a nation, then we need to move away from this oligarchic system of wealth controlling every aspect of our life move back towards redistributing towards the greater mass of people. Can I uh, interject here? I'll, I'll kind of interject as I see fit, but right off the bat, uh, I wanted to interject. I actually had to, the Swedish students in my presidency class earlier today, I'm going to pick on you. I want you to say what you said regarding tax policy. 
is we start off with the libertarian 